following on from this morning's conversation with the Minister, we're going to turn to the topic du jour for the tourism sector at the minute. And I'm going to be joined now on stage by two of our aviation heavyweights, Kenny Jacobs, who's the CEO of DAA, and Donald Moriarty, Chief Corporate Affairs Officer at Aer Lingus. Give them a warm welcome. Last week, Owen Amara Walsh said, oh, we've just, I was busy doing something else. He says, oh, we've just added an another little uh, panel for you. And I was like, that's great. He said, what's it on? He said, the passenger cup. I was like, Jeez. I should have screened that call. Or maybe I shouldn't have. It has been, gentlemen, you're very, very welcome. Um, and look, it has been the big, big issue for the tourism sector. But I just wanted, uh, maybe, Donald, I'll just start with you. Um, this is something that is not going to be resolved for 2025 and maybe not even for 2026. What were your... Uh, reactions to the Minister's remarks earlier today? Yeah, Darvel, you're right. My assumption is that it won't now be resolved, certainly for 2025. Um, there are a number of things the Minister said that I agreed with. Um, it is a planning issue. Um, it's a long-standing planning issue for 17 years. In fact, the, the, the constraint has been in place and it should have been resolved uh, before now. But unfortunately, we're in a position where it is now causing economic damage. Um, we recent, recently commissioned an economic impact assessment at the start of this year, Jim Perro, who I think is in the room. And for every one million passengers that don't arrive in Dublin Airport, uh, that's going to do uh, over a billion, 1.4 billion damage to the Irish economy. So it's now manifest that that damage is going to happen next year, probably at a multiple of that level. I suppose what I didn't really agree with the Minister on is this idea that traffic can simply be shoved around and perhaps um, moved to uh, Cork or to Shannon. Uh, we love Cork and Shannon airports, uh, but they are point-to-point -point demand markets, whereas Dublin is a hub. So just to explain how that works. But, but is it healthy to have in, a, in an island nation a dependency on one single location at the same time, Donald? Well, uh, Dublin is the hub, and the way the connecting flow of traffic work in Dublin is that many passengers on a transatlantic flight arriving into Dublin is not leaving the airport at all, but is connecting on another flight to, Euro to, to European destination. And similarly with short-haul passengers um, coming into Dublin, they're uh, not leaving the airport. Many of them are connecting onwards onto long-haul services. So it's that aggregate of demand of point-to-point and connecting traffic that makes the route exist in the first place. So it's not possible to just simply take that route and put it in a regional airport, uh, Cork or Shannon, as much as we love them. And to, to posit that as a solution is incorrect, it's wishful thinking, and um, it's, it's not viable from an airline economics perspective or a passenger demand perspective. Well, I'm going to explore that with you both in a little bit more detail. But first of all, Kenny, just your reaction to the Minister's remarks this morning. You know, she pointed to our um, long and uh, very, very complicated history of planning in this country and a very strong urge for that they wouldn't mm. get involved. There's not going to be a ministerial order. There's not going to be an interjection um, at that level. And in that sense, she's probably right. Yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be a solution to that to this problem this year. Uh, yes, we should have applied for planning much sooner. Um, is, is that the big mea culpa? Like, I mean, she no, it's specifically not... called it out this morning, and like, I mean, there was an opportunity, Kenny Jacobs, and it wasn't, obviously you weren't in situ at the time, but had this perhaps been submitted in 2019 rather than 2023, we would, we would arguably be in a much better place. It, it, look, it's not the big mea culpa, because I think we have said we should have applied for planning. We said that many times. That's not new news today. Uh, planning does move too slowly in Ireland. Uh, painfully slowly and that's a central problem but look this issue is now beyond DA it's beyond aviation planning and the legislation around planning in Ireland is just moving too slow and that for me is the central issue there are airlines have moved already they're not moving to Cork and Shannon uh, we're encouraging them to move to Cork we run Cork Airport I'm from Cork myself I'm a massive believer in, in regional tourism. But the airlines will do what is right for the airlines' uh, economics. As Donal has said, as Michael O'Leary has previously said, there's nothing to stop them moving to the regions. Capping Dublin 
is not the right way to grow regional tourism and aviation. If you want to grow regional tourism and aviation, you should support the regions in a, in a better way. That's the solution. Well, would you Camping support Dublin, them in a better way by helping divert and divest to the west or divest but, to the north? But what does I mean, that mean? You can't do that. But, but, it's simple that? to say that, but diverting, like you cannot say you cannot fly there. Well, like there's EU regulation on slots. Are going there. And you will have people in this room who are saying, we have the capacity, we, we, yeah. we are both in terms of the, the connectivity, yeah, but... And, and we have capacity in Cork. Look, it's the, the whole notion that Cap Dublin and it'll move to the regions is simplistic, naive, and doesn't reflect how the airlines work. It also doesn't reflect how EU open skies and re EU regulation work. So that's naive. Support the regions, encourage the airlines to go to the regions. That's what we're doing with Cork. That's what everybody should be doing. But capping Dublin, all you're doing is immediately costing jobs to the Irish economy. You're immediately hurting Irish tourism. You're immediately hurting the Irish economy. And you're giving Irish aviation and Irish tourism a bad look because it's creating this cloud of uncertainty around the place. We should have applied for planning uh, years ago, I think in about 2018. We should have looked to remove the cap as soon as T2 opened in Dublin. But everybody needs to look in the mirror. We're not the only ones who are aware of the cap. This has just moved too slowly and we've all ended up with this problem. It's creating, it's creating damage to the economy this year already, it will next year because there's a million passengers coming out next year. That is now a fact. Uh, I think we should all work together to make sure that that damage doesn't get repeated in 2026. Can I ask you, Joan, um, when you interrogate, um, where is that demand coming from? Because obviously this is not working for airlines. Is the demand coming from airlines or the passengers? Um, or both? It's primarily driven by the passengers. Uh, we will serve any market that there is the, required, there is the passenger d demand to serve. Uh, the unique thing that Dublin Airport has developed, and we've supported its development, is this hub concept. This idea that you can have routes into and out of Dublin Airport that are not simply dependent upon point-to-point -point passenger demand, but accommodate a flow of traffic, what we call behind and beyond. Um, and that is, uh, that is a phenomenal success for Dublin Airport over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And in, indeed, it's a stated part of the national aviation policy that it develop uh, as a hub airport and has been very successful. Aer Lingus has been very successful off the back of that. If I look back to um, 2012, 2013, we had four um, North Atlantic routes. Today, we've 17 and 18, uh, number 18 starting ne next month. And that is all because of the hub strategy. So the idea that you can take some of that capacity and move, whether short haul or long haul, and move it to another airport and expect that that demand will, uh, will transfer when it's very significantly built on connecting flows of traffic is, uh, is not how uh, passenger demand work works, it's not how airline economics works. Uh, so that's just the reality. Um, so the idea that, you know, with more marketing support or, or um, uh, coming together and uh, addressing uh, the passenger cap ish issue in Dublin through other airports, uh, it's just not going to work. So do we accept then, is it just a, a fait accompli then, Kenny, that mm. the, the dependency on Dublin, the dependence on that one critical infrastructure, is, ju is that just that something we yeah, I, have I, to live with? I think dependency is the wrong word. It makes it sound like... It, concentration. It, concentration. Concentration. Look, it, it's, it's a perfectly competitive environment. Uh, an airport is like a hotel. Right, uh, and, and Dublin has become a very good hub, hub on the back of great work done by Aer Lingus and other airlines. It is what it is. I wouldn't call it a dependency. I wouldn't call it a concentration. It's reflecting what passenger demand is and what airline economics is. So I think that's the reality, and that's the way aviation works. We should focus on getting the cap lifted. Um, getting the cap lifted for us comes down to planning. We will continue to work on planning through the infrastructure application we submitted last year. We're working on an operational no works application that we would submit to Fingal, which doesn't require us building anything, but it would remove the 32 million cap at Dublin for a period of time while we're at the risk of losing connectivity, losing jobs. That's what we want to protect. So that's just sort of as an interim or temporary measure. Like, I mean, whatever way you look at a concentration, if you, you can challenge the language, but there is the market share, Donal, is um, in, in Dublin. Um, in terms of the airline economics, as you talk about, obviously a lot of big investment decisions, infrastructure decisions are made on um, the back of it. What do you see is 
the way out. Like, I mean, we had uh, an intervention at European level, the European Court of Justice in respect of Shipall Airport, and that sort of conflict between, um, I suppose, the local planning versus, um, you know, uh, critical infrastructure national levels. Do you think that that is going to be the way out for Dublin Airport if the cap is not lifted? Well, is that going to be an option? The way out is very complex, and if you're asking me for directions, I'd say don't start here, uh, because we're in a very difficult position. I think the immediate step that can be taken, and, and Kenny alluded to it, is this application for an interim increase from 32 to 36 million as a standalone application that's not linked to infrastructure or any other com complication. I think that's the first important step, and then that needs to be dealt with expeditiously by Fingal County Council and by Inboard Planola. Um, the Minister was very clear this morning on the, uh, on the intervention at a governmental level not being, not being an option. Um, I think there's a more fundamental uh, issue in terms of the, of the suite of regulators involved uh, in, in Dublin Airport. Uh, you've got Fingal... We touched on that earlier. Yeah, you've got Fingal County Council, you've got uh, ANCA, uh, you've got uh, Onboard Panola, and very professional organisations, very competent, uh, uh, but a, a certain level of expertise in a aviation, but not full expertise in a aviation. All of those um, agencies make decisions, and then the one agency or organisation that is fully expert in aviation, the IAA, then has to deal with the consequences of those decisions or non-decisions. So a super-regulatory authority? Well, it, it, it simply isn't working the way it's working at the moment. There isn't an understanding, I believe, or a sufficient understanding in those organisations I mentioned, excluding the IAA, of international slot regulation, of how the whole system works on a global basis, because it is a global uh, system, aviation. It, it's very difficult to isolate one airport and deal with it in a disconnected way from the global system within which it's integrated. Infringement proceedings, DAA versus Ireland, could you see it? And is that, if there isn't a, no, a solution I, in the next I, couple I, of years? I, I couldn't see that one. I couldn't see that one. Look, I, don't th I also don't think we need another regulator on this. I think it's making the regulation work better within the system um, that we have. I think, look, we're focused on planning. Planning is how we get the cap lifted. There may be litigation that airlines take. Principally, they could be American carriers that would take litigation because they see the cap as being a domestic planning issue that uh, is, you know, below EU open skies, EU slots regulation. That is a version of what played out in Shkupal, but that's a route for some carriers to take if they want to bring it to if they want to bring it to Europe. Our focus as DA is on get planning as quickly as we can. We've lodged an infrastructure application for 40 million with a lot of works. We're going to lodge a, an operational no works infrastructure application with Fingal. We work closely with Fingal to make that a very good application. We then hope that on board Planola can move with a view that this is really, really strategic. Jobs are at stake and activities at stake. It's a good application. Can it get processed quickly? We are already reconciled to the fact that there's a million packs coming out next year. The, regular, the IAA has made that decision. That's going to be jobs gone. That's yeah. going to be connectivity well, gone. Can I bring you back to, I suppose, the, the, the theme for today, which is responsible mm. ambition. Um, uh, as the ECJ mm. was dealing with the uh, Shipall Airport case, the European Court of Human mm. Rights this year dealt with a landmark uh, presidential, mm. uh, presidential case taken by women in Switzerland. 2,000 women um, took a landmark case to uh, the European Court of Human Rights, arguing that their government had failed them on climate action and on health grounds and, you know, succeeded. There are people who are not in the room today, but who have made their voices and their presence felt um, outside. And I'm just wondering, you know, because we're all mm. complicit in, in climate, when we get into our cars, when we fly in our planes, when we, we, we do all of that. And I'm just wondering, it's, it's a bigger question in view of the existential crisis climate that we face. Are we on the wrong side of history in arguing? I know, and you will tell me, well, airline emissions are small compared to other sectors, but it's also one of, don't know, one of the fastest growing industries. And people do care about their children's health. People do care about their climate footprint. And, and I know we'll be talking about it a bit more generally on the leaders panel, but you know, it is about improving the experience, reducing the, the revenue per carbon footprint. We can't avoid that big question, the human cost of, and, and mm. aviation has a huge role to play um, in addressing the climate crisis, don't we? Uh, absolutely it does. And uh, I would say that the passenger cap was entirely unrelated. Mm to sustainability issues. It doesn't matter now. I know it doesn't matter, but it was entirely unrelated. But if you look at Dublin Airport, Dublin Airport uh, opened a lovely new runway, North Runway, um, in 2022. 
potentially uh, doubling the capacity of Dublin Airport. None of that increased capacity has been accessed. The key to uh, more sustainable flying, and uh, Aer Lingus and IAG are very committed to this, are two things, new technology aircraft, new technology engines, and sustainable, and sustainable aviation fuel. They're very expensive. Uh, in order to invest in the way we want to invest in new technology aircraft and sustainable aviation fuel, we need to grow. And we can see our emissions per passenger kilometer and our net emissions decreasing by 202030 if we over deliver in terms of use of sustainable aviation fuel. So go above and beyond the mandate required by Europe and that's our plan. We want to do that. We also want to invest in new aircraft, newer technology aircraft and refleet um, uh, our fleet. But to do that, uh, we need to throw off the necessary uh, profit to invest and to justify that capital expenditure. And the way to do that is by growing. So there is a win-win in terms of growth, um, re re reducing um, carbon per passenger kilometre and reducing net carbon. But keeping Dublin Airport at 32 million for that reason is actually environmentally detrimental and stops that investment and, and stops and that can, growth. Can I just ask you, you know, it's, you know, when you talk about sustainability and everybody knows the direction, everybody knows the targets and often it's the execution that's getting there and there's probably mm -hmm. something Augustinian about us, you know, make us chaste but not just yet, you know, and are we sort of going for that kind of last grasp or can it? The big fundamental question which every panel and every speaker has addressed is, can you do both? Are they mutually exclusive? Actually, can you have responsible growth? And if you're targeting all of that growth, it has consequences. You can only do both. Um, as Donald has said, from an airline point of view, you have to economically grow to be able to invest um, in, in lowering emissions. From an airport point of view, it's exactly the same. We, like, we have a two billion investment with the infrastructure application that we lodged with Fingal last year. Over 400 million of that are sustainability investments that will allow us to reduce carbon and reduce energy usage in the terminals and in the airfield that we have. So to grow and grow in a more sustainable way, you have to invest and you have to be able to grow. Some people don't understand that and I totally get where the protesters outside are coming from. I've got kids who are very worried about this. I'm very wor worried about how this is going. It's technology, sustainable aviation fuel, newer greener, quieter aircraft and incentivising airlines to have those at Dublin is what we're about. We're also about reducing our own emissions, our own carbon usage. We're fully committed to that. But to do that, and I know it sounds perverse for some people, you're investing in growth to make it better, greener and more sustainable growth. If you cap Dublin, and again, it's really important people understand the cap at Dublin is nothing to do with sustainability reasons. It's sometimes badged that way now, but it's to do with traffic congestion that also doesn't exist. But the cap at Dublin and say, don't invest at Dublin, and somehow two things. All that's gonna happen is the, uh, the facilities will deteriorate, emissions per passenger will actually increase. And then we also have this myth in Ireland, yeah, but those emissions also disappear, disappear if the flights go to the regional airports. What about that question? All we're simply doing by capping Dublin is not moving flights to the regions. Every airline is saying that, we're saying that, and every airport knows that. If some do move, and I encourage every single airline to move to Cork, to move to Shannon, to move to all our regional airports if you can't get what you want at Dublin. But they want both, and we should give them both. Because all we will lose to is Manchester, Gatwick, that? and other airports. Can you help deliver that? Can we help deliver? If this, as the Minister said earlier, that this is an absolutely fantastic mm. opportunity now to, to really, really boost the capacity at our regional airports, are you willing there, to cede there, that, 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 there, that, there's that economic nothing, power it's, that you It's have? not our choice. There's no, there's, the, the fact that there's open capacity at the regional airports doesn't matter. There always has been. And capping Dublin, the airlines are saying to you, like Donald today, like Ryanair previously, that capping Dublin isn't going to make us move to the regions. Uh, for anything, if anything, it's going to make them stay at Dublin. We have to do both. Uncap Dublin through planning is our focus and support the regional airports to grow and support regional tourism. Don, can I ask you, obviously, you have communication is a big role for you. And it was very, very interesting listening to John Concanon earlier. You know, the, the word sustainability has evolved a lot. It's not just environmental. It is that social mm. bit. It is financial viability. But it's also about community. Mm. And, you know, we, we got an expert masterclass from John on story and, you know, bringing people along. And I'm just wondering that to bring the Irish public along, particularly when we're talking about a just transition, the cost of uh, um, tackling the climate change, how are we going to convince those who do have genuine 
genuine concerns about emissions, about everything else, and, and about noise, whatever it is, about expansion. What are we going to say to them, and how are you going to bring them along as key stakeholders? No, I agree that's a job of work that has to be done. I, I like to think that we, other airlines, and indeed airports, are, are, are commencing that, uh, that job of work. Uh, but it is difficult, and it's especially difficult when issues that are uh, caused uh, for one reason, in this case a planning decision, are conflated with an entirely separate issue. But I think that, that, that concept of growth being essential in order to enable the type of investment that both airlines and airports want to make uh, to, to, to achieve our climate aims. And for our part, um, our ambition is to overachieve what's mandated by the EU, not to just scrape over the line, but to overachieve. And I, I agree with you, that's a, a job of work that we, we have to do. I think okay, we're making we, progress we, we on need, we, need, we need to do more. Yeah, look, I, it's strange for people to hear, but newer aircraft at airports with newer facilities is ultimately the right, the right thing. Technology will catch up. Sustainable aviation fuel will help along the way. We have to balance that with the fact that we're an island nation, massively dependent on inward investment, massively dependent on connecting with Europe uh, and the US, and that's what we're putting at stake. So I think back aviation and encourage it to do more on sustainability, communicate that to the travelling public, but Irish people love to travel and want to continue to travel and the world loves coming to Ireland and that's the balance that we have to get right. It's not the easiest to solve and certainly not in a 20 minute conversation but I just wanted to give my thanks to both Kenny and to uh, Donald for uh, weighing in on one of the biggest uh, topics not just for the sector but for the uh, overall economy as well. So thank you very, very much uh, to you both. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis.